What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Hammer Ting. This is a, another game with dwarves, which actually I'm perfectly okay with because like for a long time there was a real drought on dwarf games. But ever since Dwarf Fortress came out oh so many years ago, dwarves have been back in vogue baby and I'm totally fine with that because dwarves are the best fantasy race. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today, take a look at the 1.0 of this game. We had the pleasure of playing it about a year ago in its early access. The game is now done, feature complete. If you don't know the core crux of what this game is, you are the owner of a dwarven mountain hold. And on the surface, all of the mortal races are playing a 4X game. And you are effectively playing Ironmonger, who you decide to support with your weapons and your armor and your industry and everything else they tend to win, and the people that you don't tend to lose, and this is going to cause diplomatic diplomatic crises that you're going to have to resolve when it comes to acquiring and getting things that you need in order to make life move forward smoothly. So we're going to spend about 25-30 minutes with the game today, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, I'll have a link for you down below. On top of that, there's a pretty good chance that I'll stream this on the day that the video goes live. So if you felt like 30 minutes just wasn't enough to wrap your head around what the game is trying to do, or maybe you felt like you didn't get a good enough idea to figure out whether or not a purchase is a good idea I will have you covered there let's dive on into a new game so we've got to name our colony uh, we're gonna call this place high Korag that's a good name for like a colony and then what's gonna be the name of our mountain we're gonna name it great Uzbeth there we go I don't know if that sounds dwarvish though hmm We'll call it Uzberk. There we go. we got to have more consonants in there. We'll keep the game on normal difficulty, and then we have enemy waves, and then our mountain size will remain as it is. Let's dive on in, and oh no, dude. There we go. Now we've got it all settled on in. You know, I did my name, dude. i got to have my custom name. If I don't have my custom name, then what are we even doing here? All right, so here we are inside of our mountain home. We've got things to do. There's jobs to get done. Ooh, I see sacks of loot. Yeah, dude, let's go rummage through some sack. That's what I like to do first thing in any YouTube video. Find me a sack and let me rummage. All right, so we've got kind of a downward movement right here. This is procedural. You're going to get a different map every single time you play the game. It looks like we've got Otelfrid. It looks like we've got Glaif. And it looks like we've got Brit are going to be our colonists. I'm going to go ahead and put some scouting flags out here just to kind of figure out what exists along the periphery of our village and what's going to make our lives easier and more difficult. I'm going to send somebody over to here too just to kind of figure out the periphery of what we've got going on. And then we'll decide on some mining flags. So, like, what is the point of the game? Well, the point of the game is to survive for as long as possible. That is ultimately the goal of the game. It's going to get worse and worse and harder and harder to survive as the overworld sort of devolves into chaos. Uh, we want to accumulate mountain lore by accomplishing various tasks like scouting and finding relics and things of that nature. We use that to unlock knowledge. So right now I'll probably take, like, subterranean farming. Sounds like a good idea. And then... You just keep on mixing and repeating. Uh, we get trade lore from trading with the races on the surface. Every time we have like a good trade deal with them, we'll get that, which allows us to unlock even better technologies. I don't know where I want to build anything here. We only have access to one building at the beginning, and that's going to be the quarry. So I'll go ahead and put the quarry in. I don't think it necessarily sends a great message that the quarry, like a big pile of rock and dirt is the first thing you're going to see when we come through the gate, but maybe I'll clean the place up a little bit later to make it more presentable. But without the quarry, we're not going to be able to get building materials to make any of the other stuff that we need to make. And so I'm going to pop this onto a higher speed real fast, just so they get things done a little bit quicker. I don't think that it takes any resources or anything to build the quarry. I think we just have to mine that out. Now inside of here, we need to set up crafting queues. I would like to have 10 granite chunks. That would be great. I would also like to have 10 of those. Basically 10 of everything, just to make sure we always have them on hand for trading and to make sure that we have them on hand for building is a really, really good idea. So off, off, and away we go. 10 pillars, and then we'll get 10 slabs down in here. Now we also want to visit our job broker. Oh, we're under attack by boogers, dude. Okay. We've got a nice little early game booger bashing right there. Booger bashing, after all, being one of the most favoriteest sports of dwarven kind. Uh, we do get something for completing that. So if we get to the bleeding atrium 
and we kill the green slimes, it looks like we get some lore. So that'd be pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, we need to go to our job broker. Inside of our job broker, we're going to be able to... Let's take a look here. Inside of our job broker, we're going to be able to determine who does what. I think that we want stone masonry. And so I'm going to disable anybody that's not good at stone masonry. Uh, so that only our best stone mason is working inside the masonry place. Now, we need to figure out where we're going to be building all of our supplementary stuff. So that, I think, is going to necessitate building downwards. I don't think we have much of an option there. So that's what I'm going to do to start out with. Uh, I'm going to need some scaffolds. Actually, if we can get the nice stairs, we can make this place look presentable, like right at the outset. Let's do that. So I'll take you guys down right there. We may not have the stuff to get this done for a little bit, but he's working on it. And he's trying to get there. He's making all the supplementary stuff right now so that he can craft the rest of this order. So it'll probably be okay. All right, so our first great dwarven stoneway is done. Now what we need to do is we need to mine out all this, basically. I'm going to have them come pretty much all the way across, and we'll just sort of see how that works out for us. It looks like he's done with his work order, so that's good. But we're going to mine out this entire section right here so that we have room for, like, extra buildings and things that we may want to place. Because we don't have an overabundance of flat ground over here, which means that I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of block making and kind of terraforming. I'd rather not do that. It's easiest to get this done the dwarfy way and just go downwards. So that's exactly what I'm going to aspire to. There are level ups inside the context of the game, so your dwarves do get better. You can see their level on this little window right here. Uh, but anyways, you used to, in the old versions, what you would do is you would apply the points manually, but they changed that around because it was very fiddly and it was very micro-y when you've got like 25 dwarves later on in the game and they're all constantly leveling up. It was just a huge headache and the game was already really micro-heavy, which I think was a big complaint about it. Uh, this guy is our stonemason. That means that he needs awareness and robustness in order to do his job. Luckily, we have a talent over here that will give awareness like right this second. So I'm going to give him the plus two to awareness so that he gets better at stonemasonry. Uh, Otelfrid, she's good at hauling and she's okay at building. But I'm going to wait to apply her points until she actually has like a dedicated job that she can get after. Uh, the next thing we need to do is let's keep on digging this down, dooby doo, down, down, comma, comma, down, dooby doo, down, down. We got lots of dirt. All right, there's many, many dirts that we need to deform and get out of the way. Okay, so now we have room for our farm. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on in. There it is. Our farm is now ready to rock. We are, like, frequently under attack here. So, like, we are going to have to figure out a place to get kind of, like, healing items from. Your dwarves don't heal naturally, unfortunately. They just kind of stay wounded forever. Unless you have healing items. And so, something to keep in mind. I'm going to have somebody farm up five water because water will restore their energy, which is one of their fundamental statistics that they need to keep their morale up. And so, that needs to get done. I should also probably pull that copper out of the back wall right there. I don't know if they'll be able to reach it. They can do like a little jump swing. So there you go. Jump swing accomplished. I don't know how much deeper I want to take this down either. But I do think we are going to need some more space. We have enough mountain lore to where we can pick up metallurgy now. So let me see how big the metallurgist's room is. And like what that's going to cost me in the context of the game. So the metallurgist place is pretty large. It's quite beefy. So we may need to put that up here somewhere where we've got free space. Or we can dig down and we can knock some more soil out. So as far as I can tell, it needs like three more down here to actually function. So we'll just keep this the way that it is for right now. Yeah, I think I will. I think we'll landscape a little bit. So I have blocks of granite. And we will take the blocks of granite. And we're just going to kind of overwrite this area so that we have more space to play around with. Eventually, I'm going to replace all of these floorways with more granite bricks just because it looks party and it makes it look like we actually belong here. It makes it look like we're dwarves that like have some idea what we're doing when it comes to building civic infrastructure. But for right now, this is merely so that I can get the metallurgist place in without having to do... Just an absurd amount of terraforming and moving things around. It's just easier to do it like this. So the metallurgist should be up and running pretty soon, but we're going to need a lot more granite blocks. 
So hopefully people will get after it. I am going to use this opportunity to go into my job broker and figure out who's farming. Okay, our farmer will be Guleif. Uh, because, oh, unfortunately, Guleif is also our stonemason. So Guleif is only going to... Okay, well, I'll leave you right there then. Uh, we can take a look and see if we can get a new dwarf. We do have sovereignty, which allows us to acquire new ones. We have a coward, and we have... She's a driven coward. We have Gunborg. Uh, Gunborg is omened and has fleet-footed. We have Sig Yaddyalp. Okay, which of these are good for farming? Because that's what I need. So, robustness, and it looks like... Robustness and wisdom. She has extra wisdom. Oh, I can't afford her, though. She's too expensive. Oh, no. She's a gun for hire, but unfortunately she costs a fortune. So let's go to the overworld and let's figure out how we want to make some money. So we have elves that live next to us. Do the elves wish to purchase anything? The elves appear to put a premium on granite pillars, and the elves seem to put a premium on blocks of granite. They also have a mission to get up to one trade level, which is easy. We can just sell all of our blocks, and we can sell all of our pillars. And that should bring us up on a little bit of money. And then we can hire that dwarf. Our building is under attack. Why is our building under attack? Can I get somebody over here, please, to stop this? Thank you. Put a can we put can we put an end to this nonsense? Thank you. I appreciate that. You've all done a fantastic job, and I believe in all of you. Was that a rabbit that's down beneath the surface? Why is a rabbit? I mean, I guess rabbits do live in underground warrens, but this seems kind of deep for a rabbit. I don't know. Then again, who am I to judge the relative depth of rabbit kind, I guess? Uh, other things that we're going to need, we are going to need this coal over here. That's going to be very, very important to our long-term success. We're going to need that copper right there, so I have no problem sending somebody out to acquire... Oh, there's another rat. Okay. Cool, man. I just can't mine when there's rodentia around. It's very, very hard for me to focus. One thing we could do with is some storage. So I will make a storage chest right there. Is that iron right there? Oh, it is. Nice. We've got iron nice and close, too. Happy to see it. Our metallurgist place is up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and we will get... We'll just maintain a stock of 10 copper ingots. How's that sound? I don't know. Oh, we've made our money. Good. They already went to the surface and dropped off all the stuff. Nice. Uh, Gunborg, do you still want to, or Sig, do you still want to work for me? You can come over here and you can work for me, like, right now. I'll hire all of you. You're all welcome. We've pretty much maxed out our dwarves here, but with our work queue, we should be all right. Now, in order to blacksmith, you need fuel and you need material, both of which we have, because with a forthright vision, I went and got all this coal and copper over here before we even got started. So we should be solid right there. If the chest is done... It, they don't start out flagged with anything that they can store. And so anyways, I'm just going to flag this to store everything for right now. And then we'll worry about making a treasure hoard a little bit later. However, we are almost out of food, and we are almost out of bandages, both of which are kind of subpar, not ideal things. So we should probably work on that. Uh, if there's mushrooms around, sometimes you can pick them. But I don't see a whole lot of mushrooms around. I could send out a... Yeah, there's ton caps right there. Those are the ones that you can eat. Okay. Well, we sold a bunch of stuff to the elves. So are they, like, happy with us right now? And also, what do they have? So they have gauze. I, I would like to buy the gauze. I think that that's a really good idea. Weirdly, the elves do not have wood, which is kind of strange because we are going to need wood before too long. Like, that's just not going to be avoidable. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to buy their gauze. That's taken up our trade level. They want us to bring them a simple lantern to go up to the next trade level, I think. Oh, we're out of money. Okay, well, we're going to have to sell them some more stuff then. Uh, do we have anything left on our sell queue? We do not. But you should see a dwarf come down here to come pick up the gauze, so that's good. Uh, we can sell off. They don't really want our copper. Prices have gone down on pillars and on granite. That's okay. I'm going to sell it again because we need the income. So that should give us, like, another five copper to play around with. This is an army right here, so these guys are all going to be playing kind of an overworld 4X game. It looks like they are currently at war with the Deadwoods. 
and so we got to kind of hope that our partner doesn't get schwacked by by the deadwoods. Uh, it always kind of sucks in this game when you start out and like your principal starting trading partner gets annihilated like in the first five minutes of the overworld great game. It has happened to me on a couple of occasions. It can be a little bit of a headache. But we do have the stuff for unlocking new things. So let's get fishing and let's get trade relations. So now we have more options. Unfortunately, we don't have any water to fish out of, which is kind of a bummerowski. So we may need to like wait in order to get that done. I don't really see anything that I can get my hands on around here in order to feed myself. So we're going to have to send people out into the dark and hopefully we don't hit any enemy hives. If we hit like an enemy spawner out here, it's going to be problematic. It looks like there's some stuff up there too. So it may be workable to make a stairwell that goes up to the top and then maybe build a bridge across this right here. I think that might have to happen either way. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, we will make a stairwell. that runs upwards like so because that includes the mining and that's just going to be kind of like a long-term project that we're trying to accomplish uh creating like a great dwarvish stairwell basically hey we got our trade level up enough to where they've introduced us to one of their friends nice so now we have access to another place that doesn't have wood <laughs> wood is one of those principal things you need at the beginning of the game and unfortunately it can be kind of hard to come by uh, but we do have barley seeds over here, which I think would be a good acquisition. We've got a little bit of lichen, which I think is a good idea, too. And some chicken eggs. We're basically going to want to push for cooking about as soon as possible so that we can start making meals. Uh, it looks like our great stairway is in the process of existing. It's not there yet, but at some point. We also have some skill points to throw around, so we might as well do that now while we wait. Uh, I would like you to have better awareness, but robustness is very, very nice, too. Let's go ahead and we'll get Spelunker Scout there. Were we just under attack? I just heard a dwarf go like, yo. Like, he made a noise. He made a noisy dwarvish noise that I'm not sure is a good noise for a dwarf to be making. Uh, we do need to find some food around here. Luckily, we've got some mining carts, so maybe we find something good inside of there. Uh, it's mostly just copper ore and whatnot. I don't know what I expected to get out of a mining cart, but I got pretty much what any average person would expect out of a mining cart. We do have a little bit of crab meat left. We need a little bit more mountain lore before we can get cooking. Okay. Craft five toncap mushrooms, make a large vault, kill green slimes. We're almost there with that, except an overworld mission. How hard is it for me to make a lantern, and where does a lantern get crafted from? My guess would be that lanterns get crafted from, like, a blacksmith, possibly. That's my thinking. And we didn't really have any mushrooms around here that we can make use of. I'll tag that for harvest, but I'm not sure anybody can actually get after it. We'll go ahead and I'm going to move people over here, but really I don't like pushing the edges of my village really aggressively in the early game. Just because sometimes if you... So you get left alone by enemy spawners for the most part. Unless... What is that thing? A sapphire crab? Is it tough? Kill it. It was not that tough. So that's good. We still haven't really uncovered... Oh, uh, that's where the rats are coming from. Okay, so I bet there are layers up there. So I want to be careful about going up in that direction. It does look like the vertical leap on these dwarves is actually fairly considerable. So that's good to see. Uh, we should be getting the ton caps out here. We should be anyways. There's a couple of them, just in case anybody needs to eat. I'm going to harvest that one right there, harvest that one right there. We just don't have a lot of good food supply right now, and so just having a few extra supplementary things I think is a really good idea. Up here, it doesn't look like there's anything that looks incredibly useful. We can, however, build a bridge across this way so that we can access all of that. So let's go to landscaping real fast, and I'm going to build. Oh, we can actually plant the ton caps. Well, that might not be a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, plant the ton caps then. 
Uh, I gotta do fertile soil, gotcha. Okay, we'll put in some fertile soil over here before they eat all my ton caps. And we'll get the fertile soil all nice and put in. We'll start growing a farm so that we have kind of a replenishing food supply. Even if it's not the greatest food supply that we've ever acquired. Uh, did they just leave the mushrooms up there? Okay, good. I don't want them to mess with my mushrooms. I need those mushrooms to stay in reserve. Uh, this is a new system right here. This is not how farming used to work. So that's pretty cool. Sweet. So our farm is in now. So hopefully I can plant some ton caps. I think I only have like three or four of them. But if we can use those ton caps up here to get the job done, we should get two out of each of these harvests. And so this should supply us with food into the future until we can get cooking up and running. Uh, don't go too far out this way, though. I don't want to trigger any rats or anything. Now, my next thing is, I don't know if someone needs to till or work this soil. So, ton cap mushrooms required 0% complete. I bet the farmer has to do it, but the farmer is too busy making water right now. There we go. Now we're on the job. Get on in there. I was a mushroom farmer deep beneath the soil where I work and toil. All right, sweet, man. Uh, those are planted. I don't know if they need to fiddle with them any further or if they are totally satisfactory exactly where they stand, but that's done, and frankly, that pleases me. So anyways, I'm, I'm happy with being pleased. I think being pleased is a good thing to be right about now. Uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to run a walkway out this way. It's going to take a while for that to get done. But like in the early game, like a lot of what you're going to spend your time doing is just going to be infrastructure building and like providing yourself with places that you can actually put things and stuff. While they work on that, we can also go back to the overworld and we can see what people have rocking up here. I can't make the lanterns yet. It looks like they still want pillars and they still want blocks of granite. So that's okay. What do these guys want? These guys want granite pillars, like, really, really bad. So they can do that. Okay. Like, I would prefer to find someone that has some things that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and buy these cave lichens, though. Just to kind of move up our trade reputation with them. And then I will also sell them my granite pillars for right now just to replenish our mountain horde, which unfortunately has been somewhat depleted. This dwarf is running out of greed. The sight of coins might make them cheer up. Okay. Can I pay them or something to make that go away so that they don't die of a lack of greed? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, like, fine with it. What do you guys want? Blocks of granite and beams? Yeah, I think we can do that. Does it just auto-cue that? Or do I have to, like, specifically tell them to go drop that off? I think I may... So oh, no, it actually, like, counted. It looks like they're just going to bring it on over by their own volition. Okay, good. Fantastic. We should have all that stuff on us right there, so that should be some free trade lore. On top of that, we have enough for cooking right now, which is good. Really, really good. Uh, because once those mushrooms grow, we're going to need to actually, like, cook those into a favorable meal. I don't know how long it takes these ton caps to grow, but those definitely don't look like they're ready to rock. They look like little baby ton caps. Uh, with the cooking building, how big is the cookery? The cookery is quite large. Uh, so unfortunately, the cookery is going to have to go somewhere like right there if we want it actually to be like fully functional. So we'll get that moving. A lot of our granite blocks right now are going towards this bridge construction effort so that we can access this little upper area up here where... I don't think there's anything, but, like, we're still going to give it our best college try because that's what a dwarf does. Oh, apparently I've completed, like, a million tasks. Fantastic. Do I have enough mountain lore to do anything? Uh, I can get grains and milling, but that doesn't sound like the heavy metal idea. Like, I want blacksmithing next. That way I can start making tools for my dwarves that make them work faster. 
and like we can make nicer stuff and we can start whipping up lanterns and things so that apparently dwarves can help elves see in the dark because that's the subtext of this adventure is that we're just, you know, over glorified light bulb merchants. I think those need to be planted again. I think. Good. It looks like we actually got a really solid yield right there and we've got extra mushrooms laying around. So we have officially made it to where we were trying to go. I'm actually going to kind of turn the rest of this into a farm as well. I think that's a really smart idea. And we'll just get like a really, really big field of mushrooms down here to kind of like secure our future survival. And then if there's any type of mushroom soup we can make, there's a mushroom stew right there. Okay. So mushrooms of any kind can be used for that very well. Let us add mushroom stews to the queue. We'll maintain 10 of those. Now that they've got the soil in, we can plant even more of these. We don't have enough for right now, but after this harvest, we should have enough to finish off our little crop field right there, and then I think we'll be all good to go. May yeah, I ask this hammer ting? I hope you guys liked what you've seen so far. I will be streaming this on the day that the video goes live so you can get a deeper, in-depth look at it. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. As one final bit of business, we can take a look at the options menu. You have the ability to change the language. There's all the available languages. Hopefully you see yours there. We can turn off and on the tutorials. You can kind of disable dwarf names and just different display stuff. Arachnophobia mode is enabled by default. It converts all of the spiders into little cardboard boxes that have a spider face drawn on the side of them in like marker. Uh, you can make auto pause and change around with that. You can also make it so that it minimizes the resources used when you have the window out tabbed. In the graphics options, we have windowed, borderless, dedicated, full screen. We have UI scaling so you can customize the size of the UI. You have resolution scaling so that you can tighten up the textures if you want to. You've got a UI widescreen width, which determines how wide this stuff is. You've got anti-aliasing in here for smoothing out the rough, jaggy edges on the various polygons. Vertical sync, just in case you've got yourself a little bit of tearing. Bloom can be turned on and off. And then there's also a low resource mode that you can put on just in case your computer isn't very good. Uh, we have audio mixer, fairly standard fair stuff on this side. Key bindings, everything is fully re-key bindable. I think that's really, really good. And then it's just a bunch of logbook settings underneath that with basically what it displays like in this little top area that you've been seeing pop up this entire time. I'll see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. I appreciate you hanging out. And I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the Indie Skillet. Bye, everybody.